Hello. This is LB Kamtandaoni. Welcome to uh, this channel where we'll talk about business analytics. This is just an introduction part of uh, a course of business analytics that will take about uh, five to six lectures to be finished. So let's start with the understanding what business analytics is. But before going to uh, the real meaning of business analytics, then consider this. Uh, you apply for a loan for the first time, for example. You go to a bank and you say that I need a loan. Then the bank need to assess the riskness of that loan that they might give to you. Have you ever uh, considered how do these bank assess uh, the riskness of the loan that they might make to their customers? How about this? How do does Amazon.com know which books and other products to recommend to you when you log in into their website? Or have you ever opened uh, a YouTube channel where you find that there are some videos that are recommended to you? How do does YouTube know which video to recommend to you? Or if you are a traveler, how do airlines determine what price to quote to you when you are shopping for a plane ticket? If you go to visit to a doctor, how can a doctor better diagnose and treat you when you are ill or you are injured? Uh, in the case of a loan, you may be applying for a loan for the first time, but one thing you have to note, there are some millions of people around the world have applied for loans before. Many of these loan recipients have paid back their loans in full and on time, but some have not paid them. The bank wants to know whether you are more like those who have paid back their loans or more like those who have defaulted. So by comparing your credit history, financial situation, and other factors to the vast database of previous loan recipients, then the bank can effectively assess how likely you are to default on a certain loan. So in order to say that... Uh, we can give you a loan or not, then the bank needs to know some characteristics, some credit history, some financial situation and other factors that you possess. Why do they want to know all those? Because they have also credit history of millions of other loan re recipients, some financial situation of other loan recipients, where they compare these two data, then they come to the point where they say, you can get the loan or you cannot get the loan. Similarly, uh, Amazon.com has access to data on millions of purchases that made by uh, customers on its website. Then Amazon.com examines your previous purchases, the products you have viewed, and other products uh, recommendations that you have provided. Then Amazon searches through its huge database of customers who are similar to you in terms of product purchases, in terms of recommendations and interests. Then once similar customers have been identified, their purchases form the basis of the recommendations given to you. This applies the same to the videos that you watch uh, in YouTube. If you consider the case of being evaluated by a doctor for a potentially seriously uh, medical issue, there are hundreds of medical papers may describe research studies that are done on patients facing similar diagnosis and thousands of data points exist on the outcomes. However, it is extremely unlikely that your doctor has read every one of these research papers or is aware of all previous patient outcomes. So instead of relying only on her medical training and knowledge gained from her limited set of uh, previous patients, wouldn't it be better for your doctor to have access to the expertise and patient's histories of thousands of doctors around the world? So those questions that I have asked and a simple explanation shows us there is a thing called business analytics. A group of IBM computer scientists initiated a certain project to develop uh, a new decision technology that will help 
in answering these type of questions. That technology is called Watson. It was named after the founder of IBM, the founder of IBM, which is uh, the name was uh, Thomas J. Watson. The team at IBM focused on one aim, which is how the vast amounts of data now available on the internet can be used to make more data-driven, smarter decisions. So Watson uh, became a household name in 2011 when it famously won the television game that was called uh, Jeopardy. So since that proof of the concept in 2011, IBM has reached the agreements with the health insurance providers, WellPoint. Now it is called Anthem, the financial services company, Citibank, the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, and automobile uh, manufacturer General Motors to apply Watson to the decision uh, problems that they, they face. So Watson is actually a system of computing hardware with high-speed data processing and analytical algorithms that are combined to make data-based recommendations. As more and more data are collected, then this system, which is called Watson, has the capability to learn over time. And in simple terms, according to IBM, Watson gathers hundreds of thousands of possible solutions from a huge data bank evaluates them using analytical techniques and proposes only the best solutions for consideration. So Watson provides not just a single solution but rather a range of good solutions with a confidence level uh, for each. Now, what can we say? The availability of massive amounts of data, improvements in analytical methodologies, and substantial increases in computing power have all come together to the results in a dramatic upsurge in the use of analytical methods in business and reliance on the discipline that is the focus of this video, that is the business analytics. So we will talk about business analytics whose originality is from the Watson system. But before digging deep into business analytics, let's first talk about decision making. It is the responsibility of managers to plan, to coordinate, to organize, and lead their organizations to better perform. So if managers want their organizations to perform, then they plan. They coordinate several activities. They organize people and activities and resources. Then they lead the organization. The aim is to reach to the better uh, performers. Ultimately, managers' responsibilities require that they make strategic, tactical, or operational decisions. If you remember, when you talk about decisions, there is a very important uh, or famous uh, pyramidal uh, structure that is drawn in most of textbooks that divides the manager's laws into levels, three important levels. The lower level, this one here, is called the operational level. The middle level is called the tactical level. And the upper level is called uh, the strategic, strategic level. So uh, these decisions, whose uh, they are the manager's responsibilities require then they fall either under operational decisions or tactical decisions or strategic decisions. When you talk about strategic decisions, actually these involve higher level issues concerned with the overall direction of the organization. So the overall direction of the organization is at the top level, which is the strategic level. And the decisions that are made there are called strategic decisions. These decisions define the organization's overall goals and aspirations for the future. So the goals and objectives of the organizations are defined at this level, which we call the strategic level. And these decisions are the ones that are involved. Now, strategic decisions are usually uh, the domain of higher level executives and have a time horizon 
of three to five years. So uh, they have what we call long-term goals or long-term objectives. Then again, we have what we call tactical decisions. Tactical decisions uh, concern how the organization should achieve the goals and objectives set by its strategy. So we want to achieve the goal. We have uh, set a certain strategy, certain objective uh, by that strategy or certain uh, goals by that strategy. Then uh, it is the responsibility of these middle-level managers to um, achieve these goals and these objectives that have been set by the uh, uh, strategy from the uh, strategic level. The tactical decisions usually span uh, a year and thus are revisited annually or even every six months. Then we have another type of decision which is called operational decisions. These operational decisions affect how the firm is run from day to day. They are, domain, they are the domain of operations managers who are the closest to the customer. So uh, when we talk about decision making, we talk about decision that is made in uh, these three important levels of uh, management. Now, regardless of the level within the firm, then decision making can be defined as the following process. So there are about five processes or five steps in making a decision. The very first step, which is step number one on decision making, which is the most critical, is identifying and defining the problem. So uh, before making a decision, you have first to identify and define uh, that problem. Only if the problem is well defined with the clear metrics of success or failure, there is where we have step two that can a, a proper approach for solving uh, the problem be uh, made. The step, step two will be to determine the criteria that will be used to evaluate alternative solutions. Then the third step is to determine the set of alternative solutions. There it is followed by evaluation and the choice of the alternatives. I will talk about this. For example, we have a problem here. I will talk it in a, a simple way. Here is a certain uh, person, uh, a woman, superwoman. How do you? Superwoman. A superwoman is here. Then this superwoman wants to reach to a certain destination. So, uh, the definition, the identification or definition of the problem is uh, I want to reach to a certain point which is called the point A. Okay? Then we need to determine criteria that will be used to evaluate the alternative solutions. The wanting to reach to this point, there is a condition that says you need to reach this point in less or within five minutes within five minutes so this is a condition within five minutes uh with a certain speed i don't know what speed you are, but you need to reach to point a within five minutes so this is a criteria so determining the criteria that will be used to evaluate alternative solution that is it you set a condition a condition uh, to reach to that solution then you need to determine a set of alternative solutions for example, if you want to reach to this point, we call it point A. Uh, there are different ways. You can pass through this way. We call it, uh, this is route A. Then you can pass through this another route, which is called route B. Then you can pass through this other route. We call it route C. So we have three alternatives. Alternative A, alternative B, alternative C. So we are determining a set of alternatives. Now we are here and we want to reach to this point, which is called point A, within five minutes. Remember, that is our condition. Now we need to evaluate the alternatives. So we need to test to see if we pass through this way, will we use uh, the five less than five minutes or what? For example, if we test this condition here, this, this alternative here, we find that we take about six minutes to reach to point A. Then if we take this, uh, we test this uh, alternative here, we say maybe this will use, let's say, four minutes. And 
if we pass through this other route probably we will use three minutes okay so we have an alternative that will take six minutes to reach point a another alternative that will take four minutes to reach to point a then another alternative that will take three minutes to reach to point a now uh, the last um, step is to choose the alternative remember our condition is uh, we should reach to point a within five minutes so choosing the alternative uh, if we say that we will choose alternative A, this will be out of the uh, of the way because we, we have a condition that we need to reach here within five minutes. So this one here, we won't select this. Then we have this way and another way here. So we may say, okay, four minutes is within the five minutes and three minutes is within the five minutes. So either ways or either alternative, we can select and it will be the best alternative but there may be some other conditions for example if you pass through this way here then there are some dogs here you need to pass through the dogs and here we don't have the dogs no now we can make a decision uh we want to reach to point a but we are afraid of dogs then we can decide to pass through this all dogs can be in this other alternative then we can decide to pass through this other alternative so that is a simple explanation of the steps that you take while reaching to a certain uh, decision first you identify and define the problem then you determine the criteria that will be used to evaluate the alternative solutions then you determine the set of alternative solutions then you evaluate the alternative then you choose uh, an alternative but doing this there are a number of approaches there are a number of approaches to making decisions you can use a tradition way that's you can say we always do this way that is tradition that's the way you you just do and you can use your intuition i say i think uh if we pass through this way there may be some dangerous activities let us decide to use this that is an intuition but you can use the rules of thumb an organization can say we all should pass through this alternative so uh, uh those are a uh, number of approaches that you can use to make decisions either uh, you use traditional means just the traditional means or you can use your intuition or you can use the rule of thumb you can use uh, a rule of a rule of thumb the power of each of these approaches should not be underestimated uh, managerial experience and intuition are valuable inputs to making decisions but if relevant data were available to help us make more informed decisions with the vast amount of data now generated and stored electronically it is estimated that the amount of data stored by businesses more than doubles every two years so so long as now we have these electronic systems we have let's say hospital information systems we have customer relationship management systems we have um, business information systems and so many other information systems marketing systems etc so these systems uh, collect a vast amounts of data so they generate vast amount of data then these data are stored electronically now how can managers convert this data into knowledge that they can use to be more efficient and effective so that's a question that if we ask ourselves there is where we can come to a point where we can define what is uh, a business analytics but before defining business analytics let's see what makes uh what makes uh making decisions so difficult and challenging what makes decision making difficult and challenging there are two key factors that make uh decision making difficult and challenging the first our factor is uncertainty and actually uncertainty is probably the number one challenge so if we knew for example how much the demand will be for our product suppose we have a product let's say we have a product we are selling a product then uh, we want to sell this product 
uh, to people, let's say people at the College of Informatics and Vital Education. What do you think if we knew in advance how much the demand will be of our product, then we could do a much better job of planning and scheduling what? Production. So we can decide uh, to produce, let's say, five products and be sure that these five products will be brought at the College of Informatics. How about this? If we knew exactly how long each step in a project will take to be completed, then uh, we could better predict the product, uh, project's costs and completion dates. It would be easy. And if we knew how stocks will perform, then investing could be a lot easier. So uncertainty is a very important factor and probably the most or the number one uh, factor or the number one challenge of um, why decision making is so, is so difficult. Another factor is uh, making decision uh, difficult is that we often face such an enormous number of alternatives that we cannot evaluate them all. Okay? Go, let's go back to our example of superwoman here. An example for superwoman and destination A. We had only three alternatives. Alternative A alternative B, alternative C. Now, think, then the decision making could be easier because after identifying the problem and setting the criteria, then um, the alternatives, determining the alternatives, which is A, B, and C is easy because we have only three alternatives, then reaching to a decision in here is very simple. Now, assume that we had a lot of alternative, alternative uh, D, alternative E, alternative F, G, a lot of alternatives, a lot of alternatives. Then in here, the process of making decision would be very, very uh, difficult. For example, you want to invest in a stock. Then what is the best combination of stocks that can help you uh, meet uh, your financial objectives? It requires a number of alternatives. Then um, you can ask yourself, what is the best product line for a company that wants to maximize its market share? you have a number of alternatives that uh, you need to determine. Now, we say uh, business analytics approaches can assist uh, uh, this. Business analytics approaches can assist by doing the following. First, by identifying and mit mitigating uncertainty. But another thing is by prescribing the best cause of action from a very large number of alternatives. So if you have a very large number of alternatives, then business analytics can best be applied to make sure that uh, you reach to your decision quickly and efficiently. In short, business analytics can help us make better informed uh, decision. Now, let us define what is uh, business analytics. So if we are to define what is business analytics, then we say uh, uh, business analytics actually is the application of models, methods, and tools to the analysis of data to help managers gain improved insights about their business operations and make better fact-based decisions. Business analytics actually is used for data-driven or fact-based decision-making, which is often seen as the more objective than other alternatives for uh, uh, decision making. When we say insight, insight we mean what? Say insight, the word insight here from the definition is very important. Insight uh, means accurate, means accurate and deep understanding. Accurate and deep understanding. So when we say business analytics as an application of models, methods and tools to the analysis of data to gain uh, accurate and deep understanding of their business operations and make better informed decisions. So that is the, uh, the definition of uh, business analytics. But in fact, firms uh, guided by data-driven decisions or decision-making have a higher productivity and market value and increased output as well as productivity. We have said in our definition that business analytics is the application of models, 
methods and tools. Now, let us see what are models, what are methods, what are tools. Let's start with the models. Let's talk about models. Speaking of models, models in a general uh, meaning, we can say, is an informative representation of an object, a person, or a system. You just have an informative representation, an alternative uh, representation. You are representing a person, you are representing an object, you are representing a system or a process. You can represent it physically or conceptually. So it's just a representation. A model can be also defined as a representation that shows what it looks like or how it looks like or how it will look like. So if you want to build a house, for example, you need to have a model that will show how you, the house will look like. We call it a map. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, okay, you say theoretical description. A model can also be a theoretical description that can help you understand how system or process works or how it might work. So we can have a number of representations. We call them models that we can use uh, to represent how the system will work or how the system works or um, to give information about it, uh, certain things in a certain process or in a certain system. Okay, um, These models can be physical or abstract. Let's talk about abstract models. These are just conceptual models. Uh, we can have models like mathematical models, uh, statistical models, some economic models, uh, conceptual models in computer science. For example, if we want to uh, uh, to develop a, a, a system, then we normally create some models like data flow diagrams models. We create uh, entity relationship diagrams. These uh, models just give us that give us representation of how the system uh, will work. So in uh, business analytics, we have a number of models. For example, we have some statistical models, which are classification models. For example, we have a regression model. We have decision tree model. We have random forests model. We have nearest neighbor models. We have naive bias. Those are, are classification uh, models. We can have some clustering models. We will talk about uh, the difference between classification and clustering in the coming lectures. We have some k-means models, hierarchical models, mean shift models, and some density model. In the same business analytics, we can use models, the finance models like net uh, present value, NPV model. We can use return on investment models, ROI models, internal rate of return models. So we have a lot of models uh, in business analytics. We again talk about meth methods. Speaking of methods, methods actually are systematic procedures or techniques or mode of inquiry that are employed or proper to a particular uh, discipline. If you want to give an output of a certain procedure, then you can use a number of methods. For example, you can use methods like visualization. You can use methods like visualization. You can use some uh, numerical output or you can use description. Uh, they are all uh, methods that you can use to show your output after you have done your analysis. Visualization um, uh, methods can be bar charts, the pie charts, the line graphs, the box plots, uh, the scatter plots, and so many other um, uh, uh, methods. Then uh, in, in the definition, we have talked about tools. When we say tools, the tools used by business analysts, they include a variety of application software and programming languages that uh, captures quantitative and qualitative data from different uh, business systems and then incorporates it into a repository. So we have, uh, uh, for example, business intelligence tools, which we can use in our uh, uh, business analytics. For example, we have a software called Tableau. Uh, Tableau. We have a software called Tableau. Uh, let's list these softwares here. Uh, we have a software called uh, we say Tableau. We have another software called SAP. We call it a uh, SAP business objects. We have a data pine. Uh, we have another one which is called a uh, data pine, is also another software. There is a software called MicroStrategy, 
we have a software called SaaS Business Intelligence. Another one which is called Zoho. Uh, we call it Zoho. There is uh, a software which is called Sisense. Sisense with S. Sisense. We have Microsoft Power Business Intelligence Software. We have Or Oracle Business Intelligence Software. We have a Google Studio. Mm, we can use uh, Google Data Studio. Uh, we can use a Starter and so many other uh, softwares. You just go to your NSH engine, uh, you try to find business intelligence uh, tools. But we have some programming languages that we can use in business analytics. For example, we have a programming language called Python, and there is another programming language that is called Ara Programming. Ara Programming. Uh, apart from that, we have other tools like Excel, other tools, other uh, database management systems, uh, DBMS, different DBMS uh, used as a business uh, analytics tools. Now, let us uh, move on. Let's see some examples. Uh, let's see some uh, examples of... of applications uh, applications of um, business analytics uh, business analytics can be used by uh, a lot of uh, firms and we can use uh, business analytics in banks and other uh, businesses for example in banks and other businesses we can use uh, these uh, these what uh, the business analytics to classify and segment uh, customers uh, based on credit risks, uh, usage, and other characteristics. And we can use uh, algorithms to match customers' characteristics with appropriate uh, product uh, offerings. Uh, other firms that can use uh, business analytics include airplanes, uh, airlines. Uh, in here, airlines managers um, who is considering in investing in a new route can use business analytics to predict uh, future travel demands for uh, for the destination. Uh, some managers in several organizations uh, can prepare revenue forecasts using business analytics. Some marketing groups uh, use predictive analytics for sales lead scoring. Uh, in healthcare organizations, patient costs and care metrics are monitored in many uh, healthcare organizations. McKay gives a number of examples uh, of business analytics users. Uh, in McKay says we can uh, do customer preferences management using business analytics. We can do credit risk analysis using business analytics, a fraud protection using business analytics, and discount targeting also using uh, business analytics. So here are some examples of applications of business analytics I have listed, like uh, pricing decisions. When you say pricing decisions, means uh, setting prices for customers and individual goods, uh, government contracts and maintenance contracts. Um, we can also have management of customer relationships. Here we have uh, customer segmentation where we can identify and target uh, key customer groups in retail, in insurance, and credit card industries. Uh, another application is supply chain management where we can do merchandising, where we determine brands to buy uh, quantities and allocations. Um, another example is locating. If you want to find the best location for bank branches, for example, best location for ATM or where to service um, your industrial equipment, there you can use business analytics. Uh, financial and marketing activities, if you want to understand trends and customer perceptions, or if you want to assist marketing managers and product designers, then the use of business analytics is very important. In healthcare, in the evaluating and developing practitioners, here, data gathered from patients regarding their experiences with the medical practitioners can be analyzed to reveal uh, areas of improvement. So uh, you gather data from patients, uh, they will give you their experience 
uh, about certain medical practitioners then uh, using the data from the patients then you can you analyze them then you can reveal what areas you can improve uh, uh, we have detecting anomalies here we can use machine learning algorithms to analyze data quickly and efficiently that can be done better than uh, what humans do uh, another is predicting uh, outbreak so predicting uh, trends in the spread of illness also can be uh, done using uh, data uh, analytics so here are the areas where or industries where we can make use of uh, business analytics thank you very much for following elimika mtandaoni we had a quite a long lecture on business on introduction uh, to business analytics and before uh, digging deep into business analytics we first talked about uh, decision making which is the very important important concepts uh, an important concept before uh, digging into business uh, analytics in the coming lecture we will talk about evolution of uh, business analytics as well as how we can categorize uh, the the uh, analytical methods and models uh, there is where we will discuss about descriptive analytics we'll describe we'll discuss about predictive analytics we'll discuss about pre prescriptive analytics and then in the same lecture we will also uh, give an overview about uh, big data we will talk about the four important concepts in big data volume velocity variety and veracity we'll talk about them then in the uh, another lecture will see uh, the business analytics in practice so thank you very much for following elmika mtandaoni i'm your presenter agustino mogos